Today I am reviewing for you Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I'm giving this 4 out of 5 stars because I really enjoyed it, but I did have some problems with it, so we'll get into that after I tell you what it's about. Just in case any of you are not aware, Carry On is fan fiction of a book series that doesn't exist. <laughs> if no one has heard of or read Fangirl, I have to explain Fangirl a little bit in order to really explain the awesomeness of Carry On. Because I could just tell you what Carry On is about, but I feel like it won't give you the same effect if I don't tell you what Fangirl is about first. Fangirl is about a girl named Kath who writes fan fiction, and she's very, very popular for it. Her fan fiction gets thousands and thousands of views, and she writes fan fiction for a book series called Simon Snow, which is basically Harry Potter except it's not, it's Simon Snow. And in the world of fangirl, Simon Snow is like the biggest thing, the biggest children's literature thing to explode. Um, there's seven books and there's a bunch of movies and there's an eighth book coming out, an eighth and final book. And in fangirl you get to read snippets from the Simon Snow books that are not real. You also get to read some snippets of her fan fiction. So in Simon Snow, the book series that is not real, you just hear about it in fangirl, there are two basically main characters. There's Simon, who's Simon Snow, and Baz, and they are roommates. They've been roommates since they started going to magic school when they were 11, but they are also mortal enemies. And in Kath's fan fiction, all of the fan fiction that she writes, Simon and Baz are in love. And throughout Fangirl, Kath is trying to write her own version of the eighth book before the actual eighth book gets published. And her version is supposed to feel like it continues on with the other seven books who have, that have been published. So um, Simon and Baz have to fall in love as if the other seven books in the series actually still happened, if that makes sense. And that's what Carry On is. Carry On is basically Kath's version of the eighth book of Simon Snow. <laughs> Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So what Carry On is about is about Simon Snow, who is an orphan and goes to a magic school, and it is, his la it is his last year in magic school, and Baz, who is his mortal enemy, who has been his roommate since he was 11 when he started at this magic school, which is called Watford, is not at school. September comes, all of his friends are there, and Baz is not, and he has no idea where Baz is, and he's convinced that he's plotting a way to kill him. Baz isn't plotting a way to kill him, but I can't tell you where he was. He eventually shows up back at the school, and there's this mystery thing with ghosts, because there's like this veil that lifts during a certain time every 20 years where ghosts can interact with the living, and a ghost contacts Simon, because they're trying to contact Baz, but Baz is missing, and Simon has to pass this message along to Baz, and when Baz finally shows up back at school, Simon decides to tell Baz about this message from the ghost that spoke to him, even though they're mortal enemies, and they end up calling a truce and work together to solve a mystery. There's also an evil magic being <laughs> called the Humdrum <laughs> that they have to try and defeat as well. And the thing that I liked about this is because this is supposed to like feel like, um, like it belongs to the rest of the series that doesn't exist. <laughs> so Simon and Baz are not in love at the beginning of the story, and they like fall in love throughout the story, and it's fabulous. And what I loved most about it is that Baz has been in love with Simon since the beginning, in Kath's version. And so this has multiple perspectives. It is told in the first person, but from many different people's perspectives. Mostly Simon and Baz throughout the story, but other people get their story told as well. But I loved when Baz was telling the story because he talks about like how much he hates Simon, but how much he loves him. <laughs> and how he loves him so much and he doesn't want to let he doesn't want him to know that he loves him because Simon's not gay. And so instead of doing something that he really wants to do to him, he'll do something evil instead. And it's just, ugh, it's fabulous. I loved that. I loved Baz. I loved Simon and Baz. I loved how their relationship grew and how it slowly, like, they slowly got tighter and tighter. And I loved when they kissed and when they kissed again <laughs> and when they talked about kissing and then when they kissed more. <laughs> It was really good. The only thing really that I didn't really like about it was I thought the mystery thing surrounding the ghost, not really the ghost, but like the the answers that they got and the way they got the answers I felt like were kind of 
easy. I felt like they weren't I felt like they they weren't completely thought out. I felt like I felt like there could have it could have been a little bit of a better explanation and the things that happened to explain everything could have been a little bit better. Also, I think the humdrum thing was a little weird. Um um like the way that ended and everything, I thought it was kind of strange and quick. Um also, the beginning chunk before Baz showed up I thought was not that great. It was kind of boring and I was just reading it because I really wanted to read about Simon and Baz. So I wasn't super interested in the big first chunk before Baz showed up. But other than that, I really, really enjoyed it. If you liked the sections of Simon Snow from Fangirl, especially if you liked Simon and Baz, then I would definitely recommend this. You should definitely read it. If you didn't like the Simon Snow snippets from Fangirl, then you probably are not going to like this. <laughs> And if you didn't read Fangirl, you can still read this, and I feel like you can still enjoy it, but I feel like you won't appreciate it as much. You won't appreciate the story as much if you haven't read Fangirl. But if you haven't read Fangirl, I highly recommend it. I loved Fangirl. It was fabulous. I thought it was really well thought out and well written and well everything. I loved it. So, yeah. <laughs> I forgot to mention something about the book that I loved. I'm just going to squeeze this in here. It's like three hours later, I'm wrapping Christmas presents and I just realized I forgot to mention this one thing, is that a lot of this book, like probably half of it, uh, takes place over Christmas and it's just, uh, it's fabulous, like it takes place over Christmas break, not like all over on Christmas day, but so there's like talk of Christmas and stuff like that, which I really liked. Because I was reading it close to Christmas, that just made it, it even better and more amazing. And they mentioned Boxing Day, it was just a cute little, a cute little bonus to the story for me. So. Um, this is also a really good Christmassy read if you like reading Christmassy themed books because a lot of it takes place over Christmas time. That is my review on Carry On, so I hope you enjoy and have a wonderful day!